Hello and thanks for watching another edition of ARFCOM News. Today I want to warn you about the federal bill which could end online ammo sales, Detroit's year-long wait for CCWs, and the unstoppable victory train for constitutional carry sweeping the nation. But before we get started, I want to tell you about the fine mahogany night vision products offered to you by our friends at TNVC.com. Artfully handcrafted by earnest, hardworking Amish operators, TNVC Night Vision is unique and uncompromising, just like you. If you like seeing stuff more than not seeing stuff, take a look at our sponsor, TNVC.com, your source for quality night vision gear to make you the bump in the night. A new bill introduced in the U.S. House would eliminate online ammo sales. H.R. 1207 would require anyone selling ammunition to have a federal license, require all sales to non-licensed individuals be in person, and it would require ammo dealers to report all sales over a thousand rounds to local law enforcement. If you're watching this channel, you probably know that almost nobody actually buys ammo in person these days. Even in the before times, mostly only boomer fuds regularly bought ammo at brick and mortar stores. Except for the occasional impulse buy or last minute purchase on the way out to the range, most people buy ammo on the interwebs at least in any useful quantities anyway. The brick and mortar stores are usually more expensive than online vendors and by a large enough margin to cover shipping on anything more than just a couple of boxes. But if HR 1207 passes, you won't be able to do that anymore. Maybe I'm giving the prohibitionists too much credit, but it's actually a kind of devious plan if you think about it. This would guarantee that ammo supply can never stabilize. It could keep shelves bare for decades, never allowing folks the opportunity to fully satiate their ammo appetites. Then again, that sounds like a way to indefinitely spur sales, so maybe not the greatest plan unless there's some kind of ammo industry Bilderbergers behind the plot. Going after ammo instead of guns has long been one of the ways the prohibitionists like to think they're clever. They've been trying this since before Chris Rock's admittedly funny bit about bullet control. You know what you need? We need some bullet control. We need to, make, we need to control the bullets. That's right. I think all bullets should cost $5,000. $5,000 for a bullet. You know why? Because if a bullet costs $5,000, no more innocent bystanders. They're so proud of themselves for how smart they are because the 2A doesn't say anything about bullets, except it does. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Look at any definition of arms and you'll see it includes ammunition. And these schemes are entirely useless for their supposed purpose of saving lives. Even in Chris Rock's extreme example where each round has a punitive tax applied to bring the cost to five grand a shot, you'd have to be a totally infantile imbecile not to realize the real outcome. Can anyone guess? That's right, smuggling, illicit manufacture, and the black market would step in to meet demand just as it did for the failed war on drugs. I know Chris Rock didn't intend his joke to be taken seriously, but if it were, it would only increase crime and make it harder for decent people to defend themselves. Sure, HR 1207 isn't that extreme, but it would still increase the hassle and cost of obtaining ammunition with literally zero positive outcome. When Californistan implemented a similar law which also mandated background checks, 62,000 people were wrongly prevented from buying ammo, but there has been absolutely no measurable impact on violent crime. H.R. 1207 is a transparent attempt to harass gun owners and it will unfairly harm low-income families by making ammo even harder to obtain and even more expensive in an already difficult market. In any case, it would suck a great deal if H.R. 1207 were to become law, so let's all pause the video right now and call the U.S. Capitol switchboard at 202-224-224. 3121 and ask to speak to your representative. Tell them HR 1207 cannot possibly reduce crime, but it will make it harder for the poor to defend themselves. Tell them if they vote for HR 1207, 
you will campaign against them in the next primary. Michigan Open Carry, the Michigan Coalition for Responsible Gun Owners, and Michigan Gun Owners, along with three individuals, have filed suit against Wayne County, Michigan for failing to process concealed weapon permit applications in a timely manner. According to the suit, other counties have been processing applications in about two months or so, but the county in which Detroit is situated has been taking well over a year. If you ask me, these people have zero chill because Detroit is a friendly little town where folks leave their doors unlocked at night and crime is almost unheard of. I'm not against anyone carrying, of course, but I don't understand why they have to be in such a hurry. Everybody's Russian! It's not like Detroit is a crime-infested cesspool or something. It's not like Detroit has been the symbol of a crime-infested urban battlefield for decades. <laughs> in all seriousness, I'm getting awfully tired of everybody using the bat sniffles as an excuse to just stop working. I mean, sure, it has a profound impact on some industries, but it's been a year now, and you have to know we all know these bureaucrats can easily do their jobs at home. For that matter, most of these office jobs should have been remote a decade ago. If you really cared about carbon emissions, worker safety, and mental health, you would have been incentivizing remote work a long time ago. I mean, the only reason most office workers weren't already remote is just so useless micromanaging middle management types could continue to justify their useless existence. <laughs> Whoa, I really got carried away there. Sorry about that. In any case, it's a excuse, seeing as how all the other counties are still getting work done. Two months is still kind of a long wait for what should be a pretty simple application, but it's a lot better than 14 months. Other similar lawsuits have been successful in spurring recalcitrant bureaucrats to get off their ass and do their jobs, so hopefully Detroit residents will see some relief soon. If you want to help, please get in touch with any of these organizations and donate generously. We are absolutely crushing it lately on the constitutional carry front. It seems like every other episode I've got more good news. There are currently 18 states which recognize your fundamental human right to be armed, and by the time you see this, that number could be 19. The Tennessee House of Representatives passed HB 786 in a 64 to 29 vote, sending the bill to Governor Bill Lee's desk. I'm going to go out on a limb and say I believe he will sign HB 786 into law given he was the guy who introduced it. So you may think we don't need to do that thing we do since he's already going to sign it, but I think you should still give him a call at 615-741-2001 and thank him for getting this done. While you're at it, why not thank some of the legislators who made it happen? Unfortunately, Legiscan isn't showing the roll call for this bill right now, but that's just a good reason to call one of the politicritters in the volunteer state and ask them how they voted. If they voted for HB 786, please thank them for doing the right thing. Politicritters thrive on attention, and it's important we congratulate them when they are well behaved. If they did not vote for HB 786, then be sure to scold them, Tell them they are wrong and should feel bad, and let them know why you intend to campaign for their opponent in the next primary. But the convoy of winning just keeps on a given, and we can add Ohio to the list of states with constitutional carry pending at some stage in the process. With Tennessee moving off that list and Ohio replacing it, the number remains steady at nine. I believe the right to carry is one of the most important issues in the country at the moment, so even if you don't live in one of these states, please take some time to call their respective legislatures and urge them to pass each of these important bills listed to my right. In particular, I want us all to lean in and push for Ohio's HB 227. If passed, it would change the name of their carry permit from concealed handgun license to concealed weapon license. Like constitutional carry bills in any other state, HB 227 removes the requirement to have a permit to carry. But as things sit in the Buckeye State right now, it is illegal to carry any other weapon besides a handgun. 
If HB 227 passes, it will be legal to carry other lethal and less lethal weapons. HB 227 also removes the duty to inform police you are carrying. It's still illegal to lie to a cop, of course, but you won't have a legal duty to disrupt an already tense situation and possibly escalate the encounter by informing a police officer you are armed unless you are asked. Duty to inform laws are just plain dangerous. Don't get me wrong, depending on the circumstances, it may or may not be a good idea to inform a police officer you are carrying, but you should be able to make that assessment for yourself unless he asks you. Ohio Senator Niraj Antani co-sponsored the bill because the Constitution does not put restrictions on the Second Amendment, we shouldn't either. State Representative Lisa Sobecki predictably whimpered, I think we need to be moving forward and having common sense gun laws versus these that just take our state back, almost back, to like the wild, wild west. Well, Karen, I think you should stop being a stuttering loser. First, the wild west in your imagination never actually existed. Second, I'm starting to be a little embarrassed for you people. I mean, We've got almost 20 states proving you wrong. Every single time you whimper about blood in the streets and every single time you're wrong. It was silly the first few times and now it's just pathetic. Go drink some box of wine and tell it to your cats. If you want to do your part to help Ohio get the constitutional carry they deserve, please pause the video right now and call 800-282-0253. You'll need to tell them a state representative or senator to pass your message to or give them an address in Ohio so they can look them up for you. Tell them to pass HB 227 because the state should not sell our rights back to us as if they weren't ours to begin with. Tell them carrying a weapon is a human right. Tell them permitting schemes are racist holdovers of Jim Crow and unfairly harm the poor and minorities. Tell them if they don't vote for HB 227, you will campaign for their opponent in the next primary. Well, friends, that's all I have for you today. I sure hope you enjoy watching these things because I love making them for you. Would you like to know a secret to beating the ammo shortage? Although you cannot actually purchase any gun-related products at ar15.com deals, I'm looking at you, Mr. YouTube Sensor. AR15.com slash deals is constantly updated with links to the best scores on ammo, guns, and accessories so you can get the drop on the neckbeards before they snatch up all the good stuff. But AR15.com slash deals relies on viewers like you, so if you find a sick deal, be sure to go to AR15.com slash deals and share it. Don't forget to bookmark AR15.com slash deals and check AR15.com slash deals every day. If you want to help us keep bringing you banger content like this, please support the folks who support us. Not only does TNVC.com give you night vision with that cool, refreshing, never bitter taste that goes down smooth, they also have mounts, lights, and all sorts of other gear to make you the bump in the night. And if you want a baller cap like mine or other Arfcom swag, you can get it at brownells.com. Or you can buy fly shirts like this one in our Teespring store. Or if you'd like to try your luck and see if you can win your choice of rad shirt from our Teespring store, post a comment containing the phrase blade at 45 in the YouTube comments and I will arbitrarily and unilaterally choose the best one. I love you.